the executive director. You know, at this point, we're working through uh, it, with the departure of whoops, turn that on. There we go. Uh, with the departure of, of Mr. Huff in July and, and the hiring process, we, things have been slowed a little bit. Trying to work through some backlog as far as property transfers. There was really we we come across a, a file of, of proposals, so we're working through kind of getting those organized, figuring out which entity those those proposals are actually supposed to rely you know lie in uh because as you can imagine some people will fill out a property proposal for a land bank property with a race form and so a lot of confusion there so we're working through sorting those out hope to have had those for uh the board today but but again just with hiring and everything it's just been a little bit different difficult to keep some of that stuff moving definitely have a lot of properties uh ready to go for demolition uh so those will be coming out here in the next week or so and um, we have Mr. Chuck Scalise. So we'll go ahead and pause and then we can yeah. formally call the order. Then. There we go. Now we're official. Yeah. It's the purple side of the table. That's All right. Nice. Now we will go ahead and uh, formally call the land bank meeting for September 16th to order. And uh, at this point, uh, I'd like to seek a motion to approve the consent agenda and the minutes from our meeting on July 15th. So moved. Second. second. And all in favor? Um, aye. aye. Uh, takes us to the finance report. Yes, so in your packet, you have uh, the first pages showing the profit and loss. Um, as of the end of August, we were showing a net income of $20,802.19. On the uh, back of that paper was the balance sheet. It's showing currently in our checking account, we have $107,487.75. We still are holding $45,000 in the escrow for the rehabilitation projects until those are completed. Uh, the properties held for sale are totaling just over 63000 and that is the anticipated resale value of those, most of which are about 500 apiece. The page after that is the budget versus actuals, um, which is actually showing pretty good because we weren't anticipating or budgeting in here to have a profit at the end of the year of the 20802 so we're actually... A little ahead even though some of our individual mm -hmm. categories are off slightly it looks like we're mostly on track and we have done an internal um, reallocation of category of funds within certain categories but we left the original budget the same so that we can forecast better for the next year and then the back of that page are just the three checks that were dispersed for august that's okay. what, we have. what uh, that that small difference we're running a little bit ahead is that timing mm -hmm. or do you anticipate we're actually going to show a little more profit than we thought well we didn't anticipate uh, having any profit really in the budget we just had that we were going to have you know our expenses and the reimbursements for that and then i think we anticipated just getting some money for sale of properties but nothing like the the 20,000 or almost 21,000 that we had so it's showing on the far right the remaining negative 20,772, but that's actually because we didn't anticipate it that we're positive that Running that ahead. amount. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So, I mean, if anything, that gives us more wiggle room to do what we need to do um, budget wise. And then I think that's a better forecast for, for next year, being able to look at this and have some anticipation of income. Any questions on the financials? If not, I'd seek a motion to approve the finance report. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Thank you. Takes us to citizens' comments. Any citizens like to speak today? Any citizens to be heard? Seeing none, we can move on. 
Uh, report of the executive director, Aaron. All right. Uh, so like I started saying, we're, we're still working on hiring to replace uh, the Blade property manager. Hopefully we have another round of second interviews coming up here uh, later this week. So we hope to identify a candidate to uh, replace Mr. Huff in that capacity. Uh, we, we do have some of the properties that are prepared and ready for demolition, uh, ready to go. We'll get those bids out here probably in the next week or so, uh, so that we can hopefully get those completed here before the snow flies. Uh, other than that, we've just been working toward preparing uh, all the information and prepare for uh, the end of the year budgets and work plans for uh, next year, which are, are later on in this agenda. So thanks. And uh, if it is, I think, oh, I'll be attending the Reclaiming Vacant Property Conference in St. Louis, which is put on by the Center for Community Progress every two years. Went to the one in Chicago back two years ago. It was a phenomenal conference. I think it was great networking opportunity. That is the 9th through the 11th, like I said, in St. Louis. So I'm looking forward to that. And then we'll bring back some, some information to the board as far as some best practices and, and such moving forward. Good. You've gone on these, these various uh, trips before, and you seem to come back with new ideas every time, right? I mean, yeah. it, it, it's a good way to really see what other communities are doing and uh, yeah Pen pennsylvania is still new to land banking and, and there's certainly states who have been doing it for 30 years so we, we have a lot to learn and, and a lot to, to lean on as far as you know best practices yeah well i appreciate you taking the initiative to go out and you know you're never too proud to try to pick up some things from other communities and learn from others so yeah uh, that's that's great thank Thanks. you uh okay uh, i assume aaron you're also going to Give us a brief solicitor's report or if you have any report. Uh, just the, the only report at, at this point, we're still working through some sales of some properties. We have a few, I think, that are scheduled to close this week. Uh, I think, I believe you signed a deed for one today. Uh, other than that, uh, I sent Marsh over the preliminary list of judicial tax sales so they could get started on some title search activities, at least at the high level, prior to the, the board's approval of, of what properties to option. Uh, so they're working on that and, and then they'll be ready to, to move forward with any of the ones we decide to option off the judicial tax sale once we decide that. So we're, uh, we're clearing the backlog or at least keeping up with that. Yeah. The backlog of, of sale transfers. I, I believe so. Like I said, I think there's, we, we've gotten a, a good amount of proposals in, in the last couple months. So I, I hope to have a very robust list for the board next month, as far as proposals for property sales. So I'll try to clear some of those vacant lots. Great. Any questions from the panel before we move on? Yep. Good, Chuck. Okay. All right. That takes us to unfinished business and new business. Uh, first up, the proposed work plan. All right. So I uh, put together in front of you is the proposed 2025 uh, work plan for the Erie Land Bank. So in, in just as, as we've begun to do every year, put this together in September. I forward this on to the Erie County Land Bank for them to consider for allocation from their their funding of Erie County Gaming Revenue Funds, uh, or gaming or not Erie County, but gaming revenue funds uh, every year. So I just kind of put together the proposal. So, uh, and it's kind of a, a mix this year. And so I'll just kind of run through kind of the, the acquisition model of, of what is on here. And then I can discuss that a little bit more. So. We have 26 acquisitions off the judicial tax sale list, uh, propose uh, six acquisitions off the blighted property list. And then of course, in that is 20 quiet title actions. And so that is, uh, uh, the 20 is a, a lump of the 13 judicial tax sale properties that we would be taking off of the judicial tax sale for the Erie Land Bank. 13 of those judicial tax sales is under the redevelopment authority asking to, as conduit sales agreement, with the land bank to acquire bladed properties. And then the seven remaining quiet title actions would be for, which my math is off there, would be for the six bladed property condemnations. So it's actually, it would be 19. This represents a, <clears throat> kind of the, that blended approach we've used in the past. There's nothing too far off from no, no pulling from both lists right yeah it's kind of a mix and certainly right. you know and and i think if you, if you went back and looked uh 
there was a point where we took far less off the judicial tax sale list and we went more on condemnation side. However, as you can see, the, with the redevelopment authority looking to utilize the judicial tax sale as an acquisition model, our, our condemnation activities through the redevelopment authority in the court system has changed under uh, Judge Piccinini. We are no longer getting a court order to issue just compensation. So therefore, we're not getting that final court order that's eliminating our taxes. So now once we acquire a property, we now have to go to the taxing bodies and ask them to eliminate those taxes. So it, it's causing us a little bit more expense legal fee wise. So it, it, since we have 13 properties, 13 blighted properties on the list, the authority can acquire them under the conduit sales agreement with the land bank for 1188 plus legal fees, which eliminates mortgages and all that. You know, we're, we're just fighting that legal battle with, with clearing mortgage companies, tax claim bureau issues and liens through the whatever municipal Erie Water Works and such. So. Is part of this too uh, simply catching up on the blighted property list, whereas in the beginning that was a daunting list. I mm -hmm. think that, so this this shift in balance is maybe part of that too. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think, and really, when you look at the judicial tax sale list, it, it's it's far less than it's been, and a lot of that can be contributed to COVID and and some of the issues associated with that, and them trying to catch up, but but also. We're not seeing it, this being our, our fifth, sixth, sixth year going into the judicial tax sale. We're not seeing those properties recycle every three years like they were. So, you know, when you would see a property that would get sold at tax sale, somebody would move a tenant into it and for three years not pay the taxes, and then it would recycle back to the judicial tax sale list. We're not seeing that. We're, we're stopping that process now with the, the investment of funds on the land bank and blight mitigation to, to minimize the, the burden on the tax sale. I mean, they don't like it, they're not making as much money, but but we're seeing the fruits of, of fighting this. Any questions on the proposed work plan? Nope. Aaron, do you want us to approve these one at a time or all together? Uh, I was gonna say, I can go, I mean, we can, you can approve the proposed work plan and then we can go into judicial tax sale properties. That's, that's really up to, to you, uh, or we can go all together. Well, and do, you, do you need us to motion each one of these individually, or can we do it as a group? What's that? Well, proposed work plan. Yeah. I, I, there's no resolution, so it could be a combined motion just to accept items one through three, and we can discuss okay, them all that's fine. as Let's one. Go ahead and move on, then okay. we'll, we'll approve them. We'll look at them all. Let's see. All right, so judicial tax sale list. So it did a little bit of due diligence on the judicial tax sale list. It's in your packet, the spreadsheet there. Uh, certainly that third column is blighted properties. And since back in, I think it was 2015, 2016, there was an issue with a sale of a blighted property that was under, under condemnation uh, from the tax sale. And we went through the problems with, with fighting on and clearing the title there. The tax sale now identifies blighted property so that individuals are aware that it could potentially be under condemnation action mm -hmm. at the time in which it goes to sale. So they're, they're supposed to do their due diligence and call us. However, with the land bank, like I said, we have the ability to option them. So the, the thought here is, is it, it's our best and, and easiest route at this point to take blighted properties, take them off the tax sale, option them, and, and just move those through the process and, and demolish them. So. This is the list, and then the last column is the other big one we look at. The land bank, we, we don't acquire occupied properties. You know, that, that's not our, our model. We, we, uh, we acquire vacant or unauthorized occupancy. Certainly, there has been cases where we've acquired a property off tax sale and somebody's been living there. It, they have no utilities, they, the property is not habitable. That's considered unauthorized occupancy. We, we go through that process and, and we, we have, I think, on two properties to date. So, uh, but just kind of walking through, I don't know if I can, if you just can. So the first one, 611 Reed Street, uh, it is a, a property that for all intents and purposes probably should be blighted, uh, you know, but as we, we know with, with limited resources and code enforcement and working through getting properties on the blighted property list, you know, some of them don't necessarily make it in these timely or manners would like. So 611 Reed Street is one that I'm proposing for, for acquisition. Oops. 
All right. 506 East 10th Street. So this is a vacant lot. However, so the technically the lot with the mattress on it is the Erie Land Bank lot. The lot that we would be optioning would be the one to the left behind that house. So it would end up being two side lot, two lots side by side uh, that the land bank would have control over. So it would make it a buildable parcel on East 10th Street. So not a, not a bad thing to have uh, and something that we could certainly market and work toward development of uh, in the future. And so this is one after I went through it this morning. And mind you, I went through this list and I was looking more at data than I was the properties. And so I had an inspector and then Kendra put together the PowerPoint for me. This is a rear lot. This is one I would probably take off the option. It's, it's really a very small lot. I thought it was a bigger parcel that wrapped around this house that, that the redevelopment authority would potentially use for the East Bay Front Greenway Trail, but there, there's really uh, not a lot of use for it at the current time. It's probably best that we just let it go to judicial tax sale and end up at upset if no one buys it. But then here we have one, uh, 1056 58 East 12th Street. Uh, no utilities, vacant parcel on East 12th Street. Uh, there is a lot to the west of this that is owned by the same owner. Uh, not quite sure what the deal is there, but it's not on the tax sale, so they must be paying the taxes on the lot and not the house. Uh, mm -hmm. So this would be one that I would say we could option and potentially look at rehabilitation or developer proposals on uh, after acquisition. Good. Uh, I just want to say 1109. Did I skip one? No, okay. 1109 East 19th Street. I think I had this mistaken with another one. I didn't realize this was a lot, and I'm still not sure it is a lot, but the number's not coming up right. So I have a, an email into the uh, tax main bureau to try to figure out yeah, what that's this That's a high is. assessed value for a, yeah, for a parcel a lot. Yeah, yeah, so th this one, I'll, I'll, I can update the board on this one once I get an answer back. But yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Why would we have interest? Yeah, and then that, yeah, so okay. I would agree. Um, this is 110 East 22nd Street. Yeah. Another one, Center City area. Uh, the authority does have a, a, a big investment in that area of lots. Uh, you know, certainly if it wasn't able for rehabilitation, uh, we, we would be able to either convey it to someone else in the neighborhood or or mix it with some of the redevelopment authority lots for potential future development. Yeah, you have that on the house. Walk, right? Yeah. Through race. Yes. Yeah. A substantial amount of lots. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this this block of East, this block and the 200 block both have a lot of race lots on it. Uh, 2216 German Street, uh, just another center city property that is, is vacant, abandoned, deteriorated. You know, it is a good place for land bank intervention. So rehab? German Street. Hopefully, that would be my thought. That would be my thought. Oh, it, it doesn't look terrible. It, it so it would potentially be rehabilitation, nice single family property. Uh, not sure. I, I did look into whether that's a shared driveway or whose driveway that actually is. I know a big one for me is is off street parking, uh, especially when we look at rehabilitation and, and you know how many cars would be pushed on the street. But there is no driveway on the left, so my, my hope would be is that's a shared driveway. But uh, without the title work, I won't have an answer for that until later. Thirty-six ten chair. This is one. I mean, it, it it's showing no utilities, which was was odd uh, for giving its location. Uh, so I added it to the list since it's you know, like I said, considered unoccupied. If it has no active water service, it can't be habitable at that point. So it's on here. But my thought is, I don't foresee this one going to tax sale. But in the event that it does go to that sale that on the first day, then the land bank could have an option on it, and we could, you know market it as a, a rehabilitation option. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot on West 31st or 5th Street. Again, I, I think it was just that no active water service. I wasn't really looking. I, I Again, I don't need another lot. So this one I would, I would strike from hmm. us taking. Yeah. Uh, we get into 723 East 22nd Street. We really get into, I think, some some beautiful properties now. But this is another vacant property. Uh, 
The inspector did say when he went out, there was people hanging out on the front porch and the door was open. Again, no active water service. Uh, so there, there should be nobody occupying the property, but apparently there, there are some people habitating uh, the property currently. This was another one I think it's, it's coming back as a vacant lot. Uh, so nothing there. 25658 West 18th Street. Uh, you probably remember this property. This was an Erie Land Bank property back in 2019. It was conveyed to Hayspell Properties who identified that they were going to rehabilitate the property and make it a owner occupied residence. He was from New Jersey and he has not done anything. We've made several attempts to get him to sign a deed back over to the land bank. Uh, we have not. We, we looked at right a reverter clause within our agreement. It's cheaper for us to take it off the judicial tax sale than it is to do a right of reverter. We were actually looking at doing condemnation action because again, that's cheaper than a right of reverter. So it's on the tax sale list. So it'd be my thought we'd option it back, demolish the property and look to some shit too. Demo at this time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, it, it was a long, it, it was a, a far stretch before for rehabilitation. I, I feel demolition is the best bet. 832 East 22nd Street, another demolition candidate, unfortunately. Uh, these are, as we get down in here, I, I didn't quite identify which ones were redevelopment authority, uh, but it would be 13 of the blighted properties. Uh, 711 Vine Street, uh, if you're not familiar where Vine Street is, it's over off 7th, between 7th and 8th, just east of Parade Street. Cedar and Vine run there between Wallace and Parade. They're kind of two little one block long streets. Uh, potentially, it's not in horrible condition. It's not a very big house, but it, it could potentially be a nice first time there, home there, a small be, There could be a market for a small home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would like to try to, to get a little more rehab activity. I know it doesn't pencil out off the types. It just doesn't make sense. But, you know, we've got this strange balance where right now we've got a lot of a lot of blight we still need to take down, but yet there's a shortage yes. of housing. Yes. So, I mean, I look at a house like that. And I, I mean, you know, obviously I'm just looking at a picture, but it looks like it's square and still solid. I would agree. Yeah, so, but there's, there's, there's stuff. There's a market for small homes, mm -hmm. tiny homes, mm -hmm. small homes. Yeah. So maybe that's one we can save. This, this is one, and then this is, this is, this is a tough one and one that I, I battled with and I wish I had more time. I probably would have had some more conversations, you know, with, with couple people about this one but but it's on here it's, it's on the judicial tax sale list it, it's the regular plating on 16th and parade street uh it was under bankruptcy for a long time the redevelopment authority had kind of a placeholder with the tax claim bureau uh to acquire it i, I didn't feel at the time two years ago uh that the authority was in the position to, to take on this property however I, i'm my thought process is is it it probably fits better in the control of the land bank for the potential of who would purchase this off the tax sale and, and the condition of the property. We're going to get into it later this week uh, and, and take a look around the roof in the middle of it's collapsing. So it, it seems to be a likely demolition candidate. Uh, but again, my, my concern is if we let it go through the tax sale, what, what might end up there? And with new you haven't been next in door, no, we have not been in it yet. All right. Let's just make sure we're not, looking at environmental issues. That's before. kind of my thought with going in because being a, a plating. I, I actually don't want, I, I, I would want a due diligence period to make sure we're not inheriting an, an issue, a cleanup. Okay. And at the very least, if it is a cleanup, we need to know going into it. And that might be something we work on through a different channel. Okay. But I don't know, Gene would know better, but we, we should have a clause in any kind of agreement that gives us the opportunity to go through, do an environmental assessment. And I, having been a plating company, I mean, even if there's nothing visually there right now, chances are 
there's something in the ground. Chances are there is. Yeah. So and we're not in a financial position to take that on. No. I'd actually would like to skip this. Okay. Until we know. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Like I said, we, we, we don't have any options on it, and that's why I'm just... Yeah, I mean, it'd be, it, would be good, it would be good to tackle someday if we can get a clean bill of health, a comfort level, a comfort level letter yeah. from an environmental attorney, yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. At least uh, know what we're dealing with. Yeah. That's fair enough. Four twenty one East Thirteenth Street. Not quite sure. It could be a demolition candidate or not demolition, a rehabilitation candidate. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks and appears as if you know the roof's in somewhat decent shape, so it hasn't taken on a lot of water. Uh, just a lot of ogre growth currently. Uh, a lot of modifications to it over the years, so it, it, it could potentially be a rehabilitation candidate with the cow water. Uh, Eight oh five East Tenth Street. So this is one. Uh, the redevelopment authority was looking at condemnation action on it actually we invested i believe close to forty thousand dollars in federal funds into this property uh probably less than 10 years ago so we've got new windows doors some new stairs built into it so we we have a, a decent investment into it so it is unless something really went south inside a good rehabilitation candidate uh so that that would be something that's on east 10th street and reed how long ago was that with windows? I think it was 2013 or 2014. Okay, so it could still... Yeah, and it, it just, it had, I believe, when Gene did the title search on it, I think four mortgages, including ours. So it was a, a title nightmare. So the best bet, we knew it was coming for tax sale to take the option off the tax sale list. Get the, clear, get the titles or the, those mortgages taken care of. Uh, 432 East 24th Street. This is one that we, we had a property down the road a few years ago. Uh, and had been kind of looking at it for some time. It's been blighted, but it's kind of been hit or miss on occupancy. So now that it's on the judicial tax sale list, it's identified as vacant. There's no utilities on. Uh, so the look would be to option it. Not sure of its condition. The roof has been in that shape for, for some time and it's not getting any better. It's a slate roof. So a lot of tiles are missing. Uh, so it, it kind of looks like it could be a order situation which you know, we've dealt with before, but they're just a nightmare to try to clean out and rehabilitate. So it's potentially a demolition candidate. But there is, there's a lot of tight properties there, so it would be a marketable property to an adjoining property owner for off street parking. 511 East 21st Street, two unit property, uh, could be a potential rehab, kind of depends on the foundation issues. We haven't been inside of it yet. Uh, we could go inside prior to the tax sale uh, with the redevelopment authorities to authorize access to the property uh, if we needed to. But uh, again, it's just another blighted property. And I believe it's going to, it would be one of the 13 that the redevelopment authority would be asking for conduit of sales agreement on. I guess if it's going to come down to limited rehab dollars, it's aim for single family mm -hmm. home ownership type structures that have yeah. been opposed to them investment property i mean i guess you won't know till you see it but. yeah no that, and so 622 east 23rd street another smaller single family property could be a, a good rehabilitation candidate you know and as, as you know we don't know a lot till we really get in and start putting the numbers to the rehabilitation but i mean we can at least hope like you said with the smaller ones our, our costs are a lot less they're they're not as big they're a little bit easier to make energy efficient so uh there, there's definitely some rehabilitation possibility there this this one I had to put the photo from 2008 from the county site on there because you just clearly couldn't see what this house even looks like. So there there is a, a single family residence back there. Not sure of its condition, but again, blighted property uh, option agreement with the redevelopment authority to acquire it and then evaluate at that point. Good. I bought. 705 East 24th Street, single family residence uh, could be a potential rehabilitation. This one, it's tough to see. Uh, 4119 Genesee Avenue, it's a nice lot. The house sits all the way back here. And so this is the, the nice glamor shot from back in the day before it came over ground. But uh, I don't think it's a rehabilitation. It's probably more of a lot. And But there has been, I think there was a house built here maybe three or four years ago up the street. So there is the possibility that it could be a marketable lot post demolition 
uh, then we could probably recoup our demolition cost out of it. Six thirty six West Nineteenth Street. Potential rehabilitation after a substantial yard cleanup. Oh, but it, that the roof looks good. It's been boarded up for some time. Uh, of course, there's always vagrants that have gotten in and, and taken their toll on it, but it could potentially be rehabilitation. That's sure. so Aaron. Actually, that's the first property read. I did have a question on the first one. Did you say that was potential rehab? Maybe I, the very first one. I'm not sure. This one I'm not very familiar with. Uh, I, and I didn't get a chance to reach out to Mike in code enforcement to get his opinion on the property. Uh, so it's a, it's a tough one. It, it's a large property. And, and as with those, the costs are extremely high, especially when we and we'll see that when we get after this, we get down to Cameron and, and okay. the condition that property is in compared to, to how much it's going to cost for us to rebuild. Take so. so of that, I guess the only one would be, well, I guess the vacant lots, which I, I, I had planned to after looking at this again this morning to, to X out any of the vacant lots. Uh, and then the, the Legler property, we'll do a little bit more due diligence on that and, and take a gamble with the tax sale. So I, I don't think I can pull together probably some favorable answers. I mean, we'll get into it and see what we got, and then I can kind of get back well, on the board on that one. It's not going to go anywhere. Right. I mean, I, I having played in that arena a little bit, that can get away from you fast. And, uh, I'm not against it, but I, I'm not ready to jump into that yet. Okay. So I don't know if it means we leave it off of here while we explore a little bit more, or we leave it on here, but it's a contingent offer that has to come back to us. I, I'm not sure yet. But so typically how it works. So I, I like to get the option agreements together and down to the tax plan or to the Muthana Relic sometime in mid-October. Uh, and then deliver them the check sometime in mid-November. So we, we could okay. hold until about the November land bank meeting and, and okay. do a final authorization to move forward with these listed properties, which again, we're still, we're still live and active as far as them being able to pull these off. So we could lose three properties between now and the December sale. So, I mean, it, well, it's- Maybe a, we can have a conversation with one of the attorneys at McDonald, who's an environmental attorney. Okay. Get get a get an opinion on that. So I guess you know if the if if the board wanted to motion to allow me to start doing my due diligence as far as title searches and other such activities on these properties and prepare conduit sales agreements, so we can start that. That I mean, again, we don't we will submit the option. I'm sorry, we'll submit the option agreement to the McDonald Real League, and they will opt, they'll put our our identifier on there's option of the property, but until we hand deliver them the check for the property, we won't get it off the sale. Good. Okay. So fair enough. Yes, yeah, I'm okay with that. Hey. All right. So do you want us to uh do you want us to move the first three and then you want to get into Cameron? Yes. Okay. So I would seek uh, a motion to approve the twenty twenty five proposed work plan. 2024 judicial tax sale list and uh, blighted property acquisition, proposed blighted property acquisition list. I would make that motion. A a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that takes us to fourth item 2321 Cameron. Okay. Smells real weird. So we had sent out. Stretching my length of that wireless mouse. All right, so this is 2321 Cameron Road. This was a property, and I think it's probably the last page in your, your packet. I know we provided the scope of the bid package for you. The bid comp is in there, but there, there's a, a sources of use and really just to kind of walk through 
what our what our costs are to date on this property and then what the proposed rehabilitation of this property and then and some more information there so and stuff for discussion so so currently uh 25.5 is what the land bank paid to acquire this property through the redevelopment authority and condemnation action it was a blighted property uh we paid 25.5 that giving 36 hundred and forty seven dollars and thirty cents uh, in past due taxes to the tax claim bureau and uh, twenty one thousand eight hundred and fifty two dollars and seventy cents to a mortgage holder that was holding a mortgage on the property to get a satisfaction on the property so we now have title to that property with no legal work to satisfy the mortgage because they took our payoff and signed off on their fifty thousand dollar mortgage uh, legal fees to marsh totaling twenty nine hundred and three dollars and twenty seven cents uh, locksmith appraise and two appraisals on the property uh, reason for two appraisals we we didn't feel the first appraisal was fair uh, and we got a second appraisal just to check on on the first appraisal so uh, make sure that we we're getting the best value identified on that property so all in right now we've paid twenty nine thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars and seventy six cents uh, that does not include any of the maintenance as far as mowing it for this past summer, uh, but hard costs in are, are just under $30,000. Bid package, uh, $92,058 uh, is the bid that is factoring in prevailing wage. And I uh, can it's cut off. So this is, it was a, and it, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I, should have looked. I believe it was an early or mid mid to late nineties property. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, split foyer ranch built by Habitat for Humanity. Uh, so it's two bedrooms on the top floor with one bathroom, kitchen, living room, and three bedrooms. No, two bedrooms and a family room on the lower level with a full bathroom. So it's two full bath, four to five bedroom, depending upon how you. Uh, laid it out, but currently the, the plan rehabilitation would be for a four bedroom, two bath with a family room on the lower level. Uh, the general rehabilitation is to clean up the walls, re of course, remove all the existing flooring, remove the glass tiles or the, the, the mirror tiles on the wall, do some drywall repair, simple drywall repair, new baseboards, new doors. Uh, they've, they've taken on a little bit of moisture on uh, their not the they weren't the best quality doors to begin with uh electrical wise i don't feel that there is a lot of work to do uh it seems it's up to code unless we run into something when we activate power to the property i, I don't foresee a large electrical issue plumbing uh, someone did go in and steal some copper pipe out of the utility room so the hope is is that the water drained out of the system before it froze uh, but we won't know that again until we start to activate the uh, uh, plumbing system but we did uh Put some contingency money in there for that just worst case copper pipes froze and split we, we have money there it, it's a simple rehabilitation it's it, the bathrooms are stacked so all of the utilities share a wall it would be a, a easy fix to re-plumb the house if we had to uh, new vanities clean up the new toilets clean up the tubs paint it, medicine cabinets flooring uh, again flooring drywall repair, paint, new windows. Uh, all the windows in the property have sustained damage due to vandalism. They're all broken. Uh, they're integrated vinyl J. So the thought is uh, new roof, siding, windows, and to construct a, line, a front porch, little front porch roof on the front of it just to give a little bit of curb appeal. It's kind of land in its, its current situation. Uh, it's the lower level. It's, it's actually in really good shape. Not a lot of mold and mildew, a little bit on the, the wood baseboards from being against the concrete. But again, like I said, all the windows have been broken out of it. Uh, it's the back door leading to the side entry. This is the utility room, uh, the front lower bedroom. This is the utility room. There's there's some, some mold on that, that drywall that's really outside of a little bit in a couple of the corners about the extent of some mold there you can see on top of the water heater that the, the pipes have been broken off uh the, the furnace appears to be in salvageable condition uh the, the thought there is that we're gonna do a cleaning check on it and, and get it up and running 
uh, electrical, like I said, electrical service, do a safety check, get the water or the power turned back on. It's got a very nice corner lot. I mean, a potential future homeowner could build a garage if they wanted to, uh, but you know, there is currently no driveway. So there is in there for, to put a, a driveway in here on the left side of the property. Uh, my mouse isn't working, but uh, the thoughts to build a, a five by eight little gable roof porch to come off the front of that property, replace the front door and just give it a little bit of a defined entrance to it to, to increase its curb appeal. Uh, we don't have to do it, but I mean, I think it's just, it's something a couple of the other houses in the neighborhood have and it, it looks looks a lot better. This is kind of just a bland front property. It's a nice, nice size lot too. It is, it is a nice, nice lot. The, the neighborhood is, is decent. Um, so, I mean, I think it's, it's a great rehabilitation project. So it'll all in, you know, we'll probably end up somewhere or 35 or so. Yeah. Yeah. So after, and the, the construction management is really the redevelopment authorities, you know, management of, of the contractor and that, and that's hourly rate. That wouldn't be a $3,500 flat fee. That's just whatever the hourly rate is to pay staff. Yeah. You know, just knowing what the market's like now. So speaking of the market, so on the bottom of that, this is 2316 Cameron Road, which sits directly across the street. It sold on August 8th for 181.5. It was completely rehabilitated. Uh, so one story, they finished the basement. I will say there was no permits pulled on the property, but they did completely rehabilitate the property. I mean, it's same, same as what we would want to do across the street, new kitchen, updated bathrooms, new flooring, hard flooring throughout. I think we're doing, I think I have suspect in there for uh, carpeting. I told Pat to put carpeting in the bedrooms just because people like carpeting in the bedrooms. But the important uh, thing is we would get our investment back and make a few dollars too. So. Yes. So that is, so here, here's, and then we get down to the sources at the bottom. And so this is where, you know, really the, you know, I asked the board to, to a couple different options here. So as we've always looked at, you know, the land bank has kind of three options. We, we can, take properties, rehabilitate them and sell them at market rate and, and help generate some revenue for the land bank to, to sustain our operating costs. We can also rehabilitate properties and, and subsidize the sale to low to moderate income individuals. So, you know, considering all in 165,000, house across the street, 181,000, there, there would be some, some ability to get some money back out of that property. Uh, but under the sources, we, we do have the ability under the Cornerstone Community Land Trust. Uh, they received $400,000 in fair funds for the rehabilitation and subsidy of, of properties for the Community Land Trust. So at a Community Land Trust meeting, I had proposed that, you know, the land bank or the authority would have a, one or two properties that we could potentially utilize for rehabilitation. And so I put this option out there that we, we could pull in $50,000 in fair funds for the community land trust and sell this into the land trust upon completion. The only thing with that, this using the fair funds would require that it gets sold to a 50% AMI mm. property owner. That's, that's tough. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's, I, that. I, that's, that's tough. So, I mean, this being the first one, I mean, my thought and Jake, Jake was that Jake had really started this is that we, we should rehabilitate this. And I agreed for sale at market rate yes. as our first one. Yeah, because but I, I, was don't, throwing I don't, the like, I don't like to, two things. I don't like limiting the market that like that. And just because you qualify for something doesn't mean you're ready. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've seen this so many times where we get folks into a home and they qualify, but they were not ready. And just my thought, I don't know what you want. It's it's great if you can get people in, you know, we want to we want to get them into homes, but we just don't want to get folks in over their head. Correct, and 50% AMI really is a, is a difficult struggle. You know, should there be any blip in their in their life, which happens every day, you know, for, for an average person, then they're behind and then they're, you know, right, the very first hiccup that comes yeah. along. Yeah. That's, that's always been, mm -hmm. uh, and as yeah. much as I'm, I'm excited about participating in the Cornerstone Land Trust, I don't know if this is the property 
for it. And, and, and I mean, I, I sit on the board of the Community Land sure. Trust, and certainly, you know, I, I, I know a lot about it. However, it, it still hasn't gotten to the point where it's in operation yet. Yeah. So certainly, this is we're still early on. It, it could potentially be a year or two before they had an executive director and a stewardship person to, to steward individuals into home ownership. So it might not be a good fit. I just throwing out if, if the board. But was theoretically, to, though, I mean, could we use that land trust tool? for another rehab that might be at a lower price point. So Definitely. somebody at 50%, mm -hmm. you know, property taxes yeah. should be a little bit lower, upkeep should be a little bit lower. They're not getting in as needed. Yes, uh, and then and that was, so preparing for that, I my thought would be is 1017 German would be a good mm -hmm. small three bedroom, two bath, tiny house, 10th in German. And, and we can one, use one that that's just going to have low, lower carrying costs. Yes. You know, lower all around home cost of ownership. Strategically, yes. I think that makes much, much better sense. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, you know, I'm seeking the board to, to make a motion to approve the rehabilitation bid and the use of, of the land bank funding for sale at market rate then. Or to market at market rate. So the other fifty thousand dollars for this that come from the land bank since we're not going to use the cornerstone community. Yeah. So so the total land bank cost out of this, I mean, total one hundred thirty-two thousand for rehabilitation would come out of the land bank, which would come out of our work plans, okay. uh, and then of course would then be as program income back in post sale of the property. Okay. okay. But I think there's enough there that where the market is today that we should you know, get our investment back. I mean, it's not going to be a large profit there, but we should be able to get our, our investment back in this current market. I think it's a good candidate for it. Great. So I get a, uh, a motion to approve the request to uh, rehabilitate 2321 Cameron. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor. Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, takes us to other business. Any other business? That is all I have for today. Okay. Well, uh, lots of good things in the agenda this month. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's exciting. We keep moving the moving the needle forward here, and. Uh, Look forward to updates on all these great projects. So, awesome. Yep, absolutely. That being said, uh, I believe we can adjourn for today. Thank you.